Hello friends, this video on integrals part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 5. Let's compare differentiation and integration. So we know what is differentiation. We have learned this in depth. We know little about integration now. So before we proceed and uh, try to solve some integration numericals, let's understand or let's compare the differentiation and integration. The first thing is both are operations on the functions. What I mean here is I can say f dash x that is differentiation or I can say integration of fx dx. It is integration. So if you see in both the case I am performing operation on fx. Correct. Second both satisfy the property of linearity. So if you see in case of differentiation also, if you have d by dx of k1 some function plus k2 some function, you can break this. You can say k1 into the derivative of first function plus k2 into derivative of second function. Similarly, in case of integration also, if you have k1 some function plus k2 some function and you want to find integration of this or integral of this, that is nothing but k1 integral of first function plus k2 integral of second function. That is both satisfy the property of linearity. Third is all functions are not differentiable. Similarly, all functions are not integral. There are some functions which are not continuous. They are not differentiable. Similarly, there are functions which are not integral. The process of differentiation and integration are inverse of each other. This is explained in the last few slides that differentiation and integrations are exactly inverse of each other. The derivative of a function when exists is a unique function. If you have a function and if you want to find a derivative, that is a unique function. The, while the integral of the function is not unique, but it is unique to an additive constant. That is, it will have some constant value, but this part will be unique. For example, what I'm saying is, if you have fx is equal to x cube, right? fx is equal to x cube, you want to find derivative of this. you will get 3x squared, right? This is unique. But if you have 3x squared and you want to find integration of this, you will get something like x cubed plus some constant. You can get x cubed plus 1, x cubed plus 2, x cubed plus 3. You can get a lot of functions which are, since we have a lot of functions, they are exactly not unique, but they are unique if you assume this part as constant. So they are additive constant actually. So if you ignore this part, this is exactly unique. But if you take this part, they are not unique, but they are similar. Third is when we talk of derivative, we talk of derivative at a point because we have this function, we have this graph. We want to find derivative of this. So we want to find derivative of this graph at a particular point. Every point that you may find different points if you take the derivative will come out to be different because derivative is nothing but slope at that particular point. So when we talk of derivative, we talk of a point. When we talk of integrable integral, we don't talk of point. We talk of over an interval. For example, I have this function. I want to find integral. I talk about this particular interval. So there is a difference here. When I talk of derivative, I talk of a point. Example at this point I want to find slope. When I talk of integral, I am talking about an interval over which I want to find integration. Geometrically, if you see derivative is nothing but slope of tangent to the curve at a point. Similarly, if you see this integral, this is nothing but a family of curves parallel to each other having a parallel tangent at a point of intersection. This is what we have discussed earlier also. So this thing we know that if I have my curve, I want to find derivative that is nothing but slope at a point. So derivative has a point and at that point you want to find the slope of the tangent. When I, when I talk about, uh, if you see graphically uh, the integration, I took for example when I took y is equal to 2x and I got the integral as x squared plus c 
and I got so many graphs like this, right? So many graphs like this. And the, the common thing here was that all were similar graphs with some constant and you take any um, uh, line which is perpendicular to this x-axis because x is variable axis and at all these points the slopes were equal. That is how we geometrically represent integration. The derivative is used for finding uh, quantities like velo velocity of a moving particle, distance travel, etc, etc. But the integral is used to find distance travel when velocity time is known. For example, if I have my distance time graph, I can use derivative to find d by t, that is velocity. While if I have velocity time graph, I, I can use integration to find distance travel because distance travel is got v into t. So when I'm multiplying these two, I need integral. When I'm dividing these two, x and y, so if you say y by x is differentiation and y into x is integration. That's how it is. Derivation involves limits and integration also involves limits. So this is kind of comparison between integration and differentiation. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.